Today, the People's Senate blocks the banks. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics World Notice Post, covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, I'm joined by Robbie Barwick from the Citizens Party. Hi, Robbie. Hi, Martin. Yeah, how are you going? Yeah, good. I'm sitting in Melbourne looking at uh, all you poor suckers in New South Wales. We're going through <laughs> it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Gladys is saying, don't panic. We're not going to lock down, despite the fact that uh, a few um, suburbs have now been told not to travel unofficially. But um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lockdown. But uh, who knows? You know, we are, we are, we've got the Delta virus on the loose. Well, let me just say, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Now, talking about your world, there's something really interesting happened in the Senate this last week, right? Um, the Senate is beginning to get some um, uh, muscle and beginning to actually align itself to the interests of the people against the interests of um, other players. Yes. And let me, put, let me put it this way. We're talking about the banks. And while the banks are the most powerful lobby in Australia, they are not all powerful. And they are consistently getting a blood nose in the Senate now when the government tried. You know, this government is full of bank lackeys, absolutely, led by Morrison and Frydenberg. Um, but they've got to get their laws through Parliament. And the Senate is consistently blocking the worst of those laws. And so what happened this week is the saga of responsible lending is effectively over it's the, the the josh frydenberg attempt to wind back responsible lending laws in other words go completely against one of the most explicit recommendations from the banking royal commission um it's a it's it's a policy it's a bill he announced back in september last year that uh has struggled in the senate uh this week though there was a motion that the greens put up and it didn't pass. The motion by the Greens was to effectively remove this bill off the notice paper. So it, it, it's, it dies in the parliament. It didn't pass, but the vote was tied, 27 to 27. And the other reason it didn't pass is one nation voted against it, but only on procedural grounds. And they have a difference of opinion and approach. But, but in, in um, explaining why they were voting against it, Pauline Hanson popped up and said, no, no, we dead set oppose these changes to responsible lending laws. We just want to bring the law forward for a vote so we can move an amendment that will kill that part of the bill, completely kill it. And, of course, that amendment that One Nation moves will be fully supported by the rest of the Senate except the government, and it will pass. Um, and so the government knows that. And so what? So instead of the bill um, being taken completely off the notice paper now, the government is still sitting there, um, but the government knows it's not going to pass. Now, are they going to put it forward for One Nation to amend and therefore they'll get this um, hollow remaining, you know, leftovers bill that'll have a few things in it to do with other things like um, payday lending or whatever. So they'll have, they'll, they'll say, look, we passed that bill in the same name or they'll just let it uh, expire when they call the election, just let it sit there. But they know that this agenda of weakening responsible lending laws is not going to get through this parliament. And that's a very big deal, Martin, because as we discussed, you and I talked quite recently on this show about the uh, alternative information about what happened to the former asset commissioner, James Shipton. This is a big reason James Shipton was forced out, because he had opposed the government on this response, on this agenda to wind back responsible lending laws. So they can do that. They can they can ring changes and, and manipulate who the, the commissioner of asset will be. That's easy to do if you're the government but they cannot get their legislation through Parliament in this area. And that's the big change. Yeah, no, it's very important. And, uh, you know, I, I would suggest that some of the um, phone calls that uh, people made uh, following our last show was one of the things that helped to um, influence the outcome, right? I mean, you Absolutely. know... Was... I, I had direct feedback on that. And in fact, um, uh, it, it was a pleasant surprise because... Uh, we had put out information from our office about making phone calls and we had discussed it on this call, on this show, let's make phone calls. Follow, the politicians we targeted with those calls informed me directly that their phones were ringing off the hook. 
And I was struck by the fact that we actually, we had encouraged people to do it, but we didn't put a lot of effort into it. I mean, you and I have done a series in the past on things like the cash band, a series of show in the road, which is hit the phones, hit the phones, hit the phones, a lot of effort to get the ball rolling. Um, people out there are, 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 are primed and ready to go, Martin. And mm. they, they hit the phones just with a little bit of direction and it worked. Yeah, well, actually, and so, you know, kudos to all those who, who, who took the time and the, made the effort. It really did have an impact, right? It really did underscore that the Senate, you know, was on notice about this, right? And they've, we've got the right result, right? Now, obviously, there will be a little bit of fiddling around the edge and a bit of finessing because, you know, nobody wants to lose face in all this. But the fact is that the core issue of taking away the responsible lending protections, which currently exist, is off the table. Yeah, and it's and it, and it is a big deal. There is there's something that's frankly not quite clear about the whole agenda because essentially you look at the housing market and the banks have got their bubble back, right? But we can speculate, and we have, and there's good grounds to speculate. They wanted these laws watered down, and what happened was the 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 royal commissioner, or Commissioner Haynes, said in his final report, "Don't. There's no need to." And James Shipton said, when he took over ASIC um, after the Royal Commission handed down his final report, he said, there is no economic reason to water down these laws. And in saying that, he pulled the rug out from under the, whole, the government's whole agenda because they had, they had, you know, cried crocodile tears, oh, these laws, this, they make lending decisions so onerous, et cetera. Yet these laws, the biggest fact about the laws was the one that nobody wanted to talk about. They'd been in place since 2010 or 2011. And every, not all of it, but a lot of what happened at that Royal Commission was from bank abuses that happened while these laws were already in place. They're actually weak laws. <laughs> They're not that strong to start with, right? They're not the, uh, the onerous imposition on the banks that the, that the banks claim they were. They were still able to go and wreak merry hell for a decade before the Royal Commission under these laws. And as Dr. Peter Branson from Bank Reform now pointed out, that it's hard enough getting a conviction against the bank under these laws as it is. Yep. If you water them down, there'll be no hope. So yep. but the banks were determined to do this. And of course, as we discussed, the fact that the government, I believe, orchestrated a scenario to move to force uh, James Shipton, the chair of ASIC, and Daniel Crennan, the de deputy chair of ASIC, out over this issue um, tells you the banks were he are hell bent on something. And right now, they're up, whatever they're held bent on, their obstacle is the Senate of Australia. But don't give them too much credit. I mean, there's lots of well-meaning people in there, et cetera, when it comes to this issue, at least. They're an obstacle because of the people of Australia. That's why we're calling this the People's Senate. This is something that, um, you know, I think there, there's a sensible people, if I can make a comparison, sensible people who went through the 2008 crisis decided that the fact of that crisis must mean you had to change the way you looked at everything from before the crisis, it, it forced it on you, and only banks didn't want to do that. Likewise, the 2018 Royal Commission. You can't go through that Royal Commission and say, oh, let's go back to banking as usual, right? And, and sensible people in the Senate came to that conclusion, and it's um, bipartisan, right? So. This, the, the opposition to this change, these changes to responsible lending is coming from um, One Nation, the Greens, all the other crossbenchers, and in this case, the Labor Party, mm. right? Whereas they're not, they're often not that good on this stuff, but they have dug in on this and that's why the government has a real problem. Yeah, no, absolutely right. But I noticed um, very little coverage in the mainstream media about this. <laughs> Funny that. Well, uh, I was in for, I got a pretty good source that um, has quite a few media contacts who's right on top of this. Um, he assured me the media are fully aware of the significance of this. But there's a really telling uh, part of Adele Ferguson's book about the Royal Commission. One of the things she documents in her book is how much the banks are the biggest advertisers in Australia. Right now, I don't know if I've ranted on this show before, but I'll do it again if I have. If I have, and if I haven't, it's the first time. The other day, I'm watching, I'm watching the ads on TV, and this beautiful heartwarming ad comes on. I hadn't seen it before, and you get a, you get caught up in it, 
and and I asked the question, you know, out loud to the family, what what are this ads for? And as soon as I asked the question, the answer came. It was a bank ad. <laughs> the most evil corporations in the world make the most wonderful ads. Because that's what they got. All they have is PR, right? They just they 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 got so much money, they they try and brainwash us through these heartwarming ads that bear no resemblance to how they actually treat people, these bastards, right? Um, but that PR comes with a lot of money for the media companies. And they are the biggest advertiser in Australia and they punish you. Adele Ferguson documents in the book how the Commonwealth Bank punished, I forget which one of the, 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 new, the media um, organisations it was, for their reporting on the banking um, scandals, right? So that's one of the, that, that's a factor in it distorts the whole process. But that's also why we have this show, Martin, and, and the Citizens Report and other things, because who needs them? Absolutely, exactly right. Well, we have alternative um, uh, channels for getting some of our messages out. And, uh, you know, I, I can think we can jointly claim a little bit of influence of um, the agenda and putting it in the right direction, putting the people in the middle of all of this rather than actually the banks in the middle of this. No, absolutely. Now, there's another development, though, that um, has just been brought to my attention and happened yesterday in the Senate again. Uh, yesterday was the last sitting day of Parliament for winter for six weeks, and come, Parliament comes back in August. So on the last sitting day, a National Party Senator, Perrin Davey, gave notice, and this is on the notice paper, that um, she's going to move a motion that the Senate will vote on when, they, when it comes back. And the motion states to move that the Senate, A, notes... One, accessibility to banking facilities is an essential community service for regional Australia. Two, regional bank branches provide vital services to our regional businesses, primary producers, manufacturers and elderly and vulnerable Australians who cannot easily access digital banking alternatives. Three, banks have closed or announced the closure of approximately 300 branches since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, including branches in regional Australia. And four, there is a risk that, if not appropriately managed, these closures could detrimentally impact regional Australians. B, calls on the major banks to ensure that regional and rural Australians can continue to be serviced by bank branches where possible and to redouble their efforts and not close rural and regional branches. And C, supports a parliamentary inquiry by the Economics References Committee into regional banking services that will inquire into the availability of banking services in regional Australia including the impact closures of bank branches on any other related matters. So that's that's the uh, the notice on the, the motion on the notice paper. Now, when we saw that, our jaw dropped because we um, a week ago, we in the Citizens Party, because um, and as we've been working with you, you know, one of the reasons we got involved in the Australia Post story uh, is because we want a postal bank, right? And the postal bank will solve at a retail banking level, at least, it, it'll just that exi that institution alone will do so much for Australia. It'll guarantee banking services to all Australians. It'll force the private banks to compete. It'll take away if you put your money in the postal bank, you won't interfere things like bail-in. It'll guarantee the cash supplies for Australians that the big private banks don't want to do anymore because they want to get rid of cash. This this postal bank will do that. It'll keep the licensed post offices viable, which is very very important because we. The, the, the biz, they're at the mercy of Australia Post business practices otherwise, and, and they were, you know, they went through hell before Christine Holgate came around. The long term for the for for the postal network in Australia is is being a, a postal bank, right? Combining their efforts with a postal bank, it'll do all those kinds of things. And this is something that um, is a it's a solution there ready to be applied, especially to regional Australia. But the but the political system has been sitting on its hands. They're too, they're too different to the banks. Um, well, one of the things we're seeing, there's a, <laughs> dare I say it, I, and I don't want people to overreact to this, but there's a, there's a, um, there are a few changes coming uh, into the parliament with the um, advent of Barnaby Joyce back to the leadership of the National Party. Um, because not his predecessor was just the world's greatest doormat, doormat, right? In fact, they should, you know, they should rename doormats the McCormicks, right? Um, Barnaby 
whatever you think of Barnaby, oh, look, you've got to, in politics, there's, you'll find something that you really oppose any given politician on and, and many things. And of course, he's the beat rooter and all that sort of stuff. But all that, you know, I'm not, that's not, this is not what this is about. But he's the leader of a faction of the National Party, which is actually the faction of the party that is more realistic on these matters. It's the faction of the National Party that, that was instrumental in the Royal Commission happening in 2017 anyway. It was Barnaby's faction that said, we need this, because his faction included Wacker Williams and George Richardson. Um, it's Barnaby's faction of the National Party that got behind the Australia Post issue, a bit relatedly, a bit softly, et cetera. But they actually, you know, we talked in, on this show about the, the really good job Bridget McKenzie did in the hearings, et cetera. They did a very important job. And it's Barnaby's faction of the National Party that a pre... It was, Barnaby was the first mainstream media, uh, um, uh, major party politician to get up in Parliament and apologise for getting the Christine Holgate story wrong, actually. That, that's to his testament. But... Um, it's it's his faction of the party that understands, you know, that you you got to fight for this, the basic infrastructure of regional Australia, right? In this area, they've, they've said so at least. Anyway, I'm a, I'm prepared to give them the credit of, of of putting that on the record. That's why this motion is in Parliament, right? They're 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 saying this needs to be done. We need to address this. Now, I've spoken to people in the National Party, members of Parliament. They agree with the idea of a postal bank, right? Um, but while this is a good indication of where they're prepared to, they know it's an issue to be looked at, just going by the wording of that motion, it's still pretty weak, mm. right? They're, they're going to, so here's what they're doing. They're trying to play catch up as a party to the agenda that we've been setting through our programs. That's actually what they're trying to do because they know we're getting this around the country. So let me contrast what you just read there with our motion. What happened was a week ago, the Citizens Party announced we're going to have a resolution campaign. What that means is we want to build a, gra a, a, a groundswell of grassroots support. We're encouraging everybody, and that means you watching the show. Um, take We've drafted a, a basic outline of a resolution. Take this resolution to your local town, your local shopping strip, right, and get people, get the businesses and get the institutions like your local council, like your local chamber of commerce, to endorse it. Get them to pass this resolution as a motion through the council. We want to get a whole bunch of local councils. Everyone should go and see their local mayor, you know, especially if you're in regional Australia. Get, get, take this to them and say you should pass this as a resolution of the council. And then once you pass the resolution so that, you know, Timbuktu Council supports this resolution, you take it to the local federal member of parliament and say we've just passed this resolution. And we're going to get hundreds of these passed around Australia. And the resolution... I'll read it now. This is what it says. And just contrast what ours says to what you just heard from the Nationals. Um, it, it goes like this. Draft resolution for a post office people's bank. Whatever organisation name notes that, one, um, bank branch and ATM closures are leaving many communities without access to financial services, especially in regional Australia. Since 1975, the number of bank branches in regional Australia has fallen by more than 60%. And there are more than 1,500 communities across Australia with no bank branches at all. A large proportion of the population, including the elderly, disabled, small businesses and local schools and charities, will always have a need for face-to-face -face financial services, despite advances in technology. For hundreds of communities, their only access to cash and financial services is through bank at post at their local post office. Bank at Post is an essential service to all communities, but is vulnerable to commercial decision making by the banks, which can choose to withdraw their participation. Two, calls on the Commonwealth Parliament to pass the Commonwealth Postal Savings Bank Bill to establish a post office people's bank, fully guaranteed by the Commonwealth as a dedicated postal savings bank operating exclusively through Australia Post's corporate and licensed post offices which will ensure basic banking services, including deposit taking, business and personal lending and access to cash are available to all Australians and will contribute to Australia's national economic development. That's our motion. And um, I suspect <laughs> that when, the, when all the national MPs got, got that on their email last week, um, some of them thought, well, we, we're going to have to, we can't let the Citizens Party take control of this. But I will tell you this, I, not, not mean to brag, watch Four Corners on Monday night. 
everybody because the Australia Post story is on four corners. Yep. We get a little we get a little spot, the Citizens Party. We had to be on there, you know, because of all the histrionics from stupid Senator Kimberly Kitching and Senator Sarah Henderson accusing us of all kinds of horrible things. But why they do that? Because we're the ones that made that happen and we left the National Party in the dust. Right. And by the time they got around to realizing this was an issue that should be addressed, we had we had made it an issue. And then Pauline Hansen jumped in and seized the day and got an inquiry up and she gets all the credit for that. Right. And they knew from the beginning it was an issue. It was national saying this is bad and they'd done nothing. And they don't want to be left behind. It that that issue actually, the way they had sat on their hands under McCormick may have contributed to Barnaby saying enough's enough, right? Um we, we've been too flat footed and on the banking thing, they do not want to be left behind. But where the they're only going to be potent and, and strong by um, following the direction we set. Because they there's no point. Like their motion says, you know, we call on the banks to, you know, keep keep um, regional banking services. What are you begging the banks for? They're not going to do anything. You have to. You you're the government. You make them do the right thing, or you set up your own bank. Right, and then stuff them. Who cares what they do? And that's that's the essence of our um, motion. So this is actually part of the development. The fact that that's in the Senate now is part of the the uh, the, 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 the the big picture we're talking about, Martin. Right? There is there is motion in the right direction to um, protect what's a little bit is good about the current structures of the financial system. And actually, you know, because the fight is to bring the, the one of the ways I put it, we're trying to haul Australia's financial system, which is dominated by the big four banks, we're trying to haul it back under the rule of law here, right? Make it do the right thing. Make it serve the community and the real economy. And that's that's what these, this public bank proposal is about, is about as well. And there, there is motion on that front. And that's, that's um, something that we've set and we have to keep fighting for it. And the political system will come along with us. Absolutely. And, you know, it's just worth standing back slightly further. You know, the cash ban, which was essentially trying to put people through the banking system to the exclusion of cash, right? Well, that's a really stupid idea, particularly when the systems go down a lot, right? Yep. We've been pushing that. The, the fact that the Australia Post model is a very powerful model in terms of providing local, bank, local banking services has been proved around the world. Yep. And all of this is tipping the scale slightly away from the centre of gravity, which is the one that drives what most parla parliamentary business and activity is around, is around, right, from the big four, right? Yep. The point is that the financial system and, and banks in particular should be there to support and enable economic outcomes for businesses and people in the community, not just for the self-serving interest of uh, a few rather well-off bankers. No, for sure. So we, we've just put out a press release today and the headline is um, government of, by and for dot, 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 the people or the banks. Mm. That's what it's coming down to in Australia. And we give some examples of where things are at. So it's, we, we report the, the, uh, the, the victory with, with responsible lending laws. But then we remind people that, I've, you know, I recently got to talk to a gentleman from Nowra who's one of these bank, one of tens of thousands of bank victims that led, who's, you know, the whole, it got so bad that all these cases led to the Royal Commission. Yep. But not not many bank victims had the tenacity to hang on for the length of fight this guy has because the banks grind you down. His name's Wayne Ditchburn. He was a concreter. And he's just, his whole, he, he and his family were destroyed by the bastard of the ANZ Bank. I mean, and I, you know, really destroyed. And, and after 14 years, he finally, he finally forced them to a settlement, which was, you know, enough to, to um, for him to agree, but nowhere near enough to cover the what they did to him, right? Um, that's just the that's just the reality, and uh, you know, there's there's tens of thousands of those kind of people around Australia, and what's what we're seeing now is the government wants to take, pretend the Royal Commission didn't happen and take it all back, right? Let the banks go back to all that, and so you know we have to stop them. And one way to stop them is we've got to shine the spotlight on this like we're doing. The other way, you know, because we need we need proper regulation and all those sort of things. But if you have a if you have a, a public bank that the private banks have to compete with, that isn't there for profit, it will make a profit, but that's not its purpose. It's there to serve the community. That'll make a world of difference right there. That'll inject 
some basic regulatory health in the system. It changes the rules of the game, right? It's very, it's very, very important. There's a service, a new service called the Regional, which has just started. It's a, it's a former, I think, age journalist named Dale Webster. She's gone and put up an article. She's, she's gone and documented in great detail the, the closures of bank branches in regional Australia and how extensive it is. And essentially, um, whereas the National Party submission cited there's been 300 bank branches closed in since the start of the COVID uh, pandemic, overall, she documents we have half the number of bank branches in regional Australia, half or less than half, I think it might be 60% down, than we did in 1975. Now, I can't remember how many people we had in Australia in 1975, but when I was a kid in the mid-'80s, I remember the the, the, uh, the population was about 15 million around then, right? So 75, well, I don't know, was it 10 or like 12, 13, something? Um, we've got more than double the population since then, but half the number of bank branches in regional Australia. And she has an interactive map, and you can zoom in and zoom out, and you can she's got all these coloured dots there, and they, they go to the types of banks that have been shut and the numbers of banks in each town, et cetera. And you can zoom right in to see the, the bank branches that have closed in various areas in your area, et cetera. It's really worth looking at. Um, if you're on Twitter, it's worth following her. Her name is at, at the, the regional. Um, we can put that up there uh, because she, is, she has uh, been putting her material to the parliamentarians. You've got to look at this. She told me they're a bit timid actually, in, in properly taking it up. But this was a good sign yesterday, this, this motion that's there, right, that the work is, is starting to get through to them. But it's this kind of cause that's not really a, just about regional Australia, right? What the, 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 um, by drawing attention to this issue, we can force changes on the system that benefit the whole of Australia. And, you know, you, once you can... There's so many. There's there's a million different things you can focus on as in politics for sure. There's, there's there's a multitude of causes, but there are some fundamental ones because they go to the nature of how the whole system is run, and finance is right at the top of that. Right? We all we all have to use it. No one gets to not to absent themselves from the financial system. We all are part of it, and I don't care. We can be the most politi bitter political enemies in the world. But we should all want our banks to be honest and and reliable and secure, right? And pr productive, like make a make a contribution to a productive economy. We should all want that, whatever your ideology is. And that's why we put so much emphasis on this question because we have to clean it up, and the momentum's building. Mm, absolutely, and uh, you know there is no doubt in my mind that um, banking has lost its way. It's become an end in itself. It's become basically an engine for profit for a few, rather than actually enabling the economic momentum that we need in the country. That that's basically it. The other point I'd make with with regard to counting the number of branch closures. Don't forget also that many branches now have reduced their opening hours. So mm -hmm. whereas perhaps they would have been there five days a week it might just be one day a week or half a day a week now right that's the other thing that is not fully being reported uh, and certainly in my surveys i get a lot of people saying it's ridiculous you know i have to sort of pick my two-hour window to be able to go into the bank whereas i used to be able to go any time so this is a really critical issue and you know just to underscore again you can't just say oh digital has replaced banks we don't need branches anymore right that is just so simplistic and convenient for you know the banks who really just don't care right but the fact is that having capability down on the ground and having the ability to access cash on the ground is a human right and it should yep. be preserved and protected and it should be seen as a critical economic dynamo for the momentum in our economy and so power to everybody's elbow who actually uh, wants to take in that direction. And um, again, we've got some um, opportunities to influence and persuade and cajole and support uh, motions that push in the right direction. And, you know, the motion that you the first motion you read out, it's pretty weak, but it's heading in the right direction. Right. I think the one that you've got there with regard to the use of Australia Post is is brilliant because the best way to create change behavior is to create a competitive dynamic. Yep. rather than trying to regulate in retrospect well we've right. got that we've got a bill drafted that's why that resolution names the bill so you can get on our website um or contact us get a copy of this there's a postal bank campaign section on our website get a copy of this 
resolution and get involved. This mm. with the, the resol although we've come up with it and we're pushing it, we don't want this to be a citizens party thing at all. We I want all I, I'm hoping before the election politicians start elbowing each other out of the way to take you know other parties to take this policy and run with it, right? Um, we want to get unions involved. We want to get local councils involved. We want to get any sort of uh, institution that has a, a con, uh, has a uh, constituency they care about, in community constituency, get them involved. Everyone support this call. Let's get the bill um, introduced in the parliament. Let's build the pressure to get it passed. And that's what this will do. And that, that's going to be everybody watching this. If you're in a local area, think about who you can approach. Start with the council. I recommend everyone does that. Your mayor, whatever. If you know one, especially if you know a councillor or a mayor, you make sure you approach them. So look, look at this resolution. Why wouldn't we want um, the post office to be a bank? Because then we're not at the mercy of any um, of the private banks. Absolutely, right? Robbie. Yep. Yeah, great. Well, we'll put all the links and things below. Um, and uh, I, in a way, I apologise, but then I don't apologise for giving people homework because, in fact, homework has actually achieved yeah, yeah. considerable amounts, right? And it is democracy at work. It is actually the way that we can shape the way that our economic decisions are taken. And so this is a really important opportunity to do it again. Absolutely. Robbie, thanks very much. Talk to you again soon. Thanks, Martin.